it is. Welcome to the new Galaxy, and it's a true titan of on-device AI. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to unleash the full power and speed of the Samsung Galaxy S24 on day one. We'll run through the settings and features that you don't want to miss, as well as hidden settings and secret features that every Samsung Galaxy owner should know. I'm supposed to start with these operation programs first. That's major boring shit. Let's do something a little more fun. So how about we kick this off with the good stuff, the Samsung Galaxy's exciting new iPhone killer AI features. So you're a unique person, one of a kind you might say. Did you know? you can create a wallpaper masterpiece that is as unique as you are using AI. To do this, pinch on the home screen, go to wallpaper and style. Here, go to wallpapers and scroll down to this section, creative. So there are already some generated AI images here for you to choose from, but if you wanna get really creative, you can choose one of the options down here. I'm gonna go with mineral. Now I have two options to modify the type of mineral and color of mineral that I want. And the text that you can change here is highlighted. I'm gonna go with the Azurite. And then for the color tone, I'm gonna to go with Neon. And now all I need to do is hit Generate. And here we go. I have a selection of different Azurite crystals with neon tones. And straight away, I can add these as my custom wallpaper. And we will be diving deeper into the customization options here on the phone. But first, let me show you some more AI. So AI tip number two, let's jump into the settings. If you tap on your Samsung account at the top, scroll down, you'll see a new option here. It is the advanced intelligence. Tap on that and you'll get a whole bunch of new features available on the Samsung S24. And let's start at the top. Let's go into phone. Here, you'll notice you have live translate. I recommend you enable this, especially if you're the type of person who does a lot of traveling, because now the Samsung Galaxy phone can translate calls into different languages. And I do recommend you turn this on straight away. Even if you don't travel that much, if you ever get a phone call from another country asking you for your bank details, maybe with this on, you'll actually be able to understand what they're saying. But this is also useful for when you're making calls. Just make sure when you scroll down here, you look at what languages you want to translate to. I'm going to Germany soon, so I've downloaded the German translation here. So if I make a phone call to anybody who speaks German, the phone will now be able to translate it. And it will also translate my English into German as well. 13 languages are currently supported and there are more in the works. Tip number three, we go back into the same menu that we were at before. Go to your Samsung account, scroll down. Once again, advanced intelligence. This time we're gonna to go to the Samsung keyboard. This will be switched off by default, so I do recommend switching this on, the chat translation feature. So similar to the voice call translator, this is a chat translator. So if you receive a message in another language, this will work on device to decode that foreign language for you. So you can understand what the hell is going on. Once again, just make sure you've got the right languages downloaded to the device for wherever you're going and you'll be good to go. And not only can it translate text messages into other languages and pretty much any text that you see on your phone, it can also improve your own writing and all you need to do to get AI to do all of the work for you is hit the little sparkling star icon next to your text. And straight away you get three options, chat translation, writing style and spelling and grammar. So if you feel your grammar is not quite right, you can check that. I'm gonna go with writing style. Straight away, it reads what I've written and it gives me a bunch of different options of styles to choose from. All of which are probably superior to my own writing. And if you tap here where it says show all, you'll see all of the categories of styles of writing to choose from. I'm gonna go with the emoji one. And here I can just tap insert. Tip number four, going back into the advanced intelligence settings. This time we're going to interpreter. This is very much like Google's translate feature where you can use your phone to speak to somebody by holding it up near them and they can hear what you're saying in their language and then you can hear what they're saying in your language. You just gotta make sure this is on and then here you also have to choose the languages that you want to use for the translator. Now when the time comes and some dodgy street merchants trying to sell you something and you wanna tell them to F off politely, all you need to do is bring down your quick settings here from the top, 
scroll across to interpreter that will open the app and now you can say whatever you want and they'll get the message tip number five okay once again staying within the same menu system jump into your samsung account scroll down advanced intelligence we're going to skip the samsung notes because i'm going to be doing an entire video about that let's go to voice recorder make sure this is turned on because this is one of the most powerful features for anybody who finds it hard to concentrate or for anybody who falls asleep during meetings and lessons and things like that and you can download different language packs here as well if you want to or if you need to now you need to find the voice recorder you can find it here in your app drawer you can literally just type in voice recorder and it'll pop up you can see i've already added it to the home screen right here and earlier today i did record some voiceover from a channel that i watch quite a lot the critical drinker and i've got the recording here it's about two minutes long now if i hit transcribe and transcribe it into english the ai on the device will type everything out for me and if there's more than one speaker it will separate those speakers out you'll see speaker one and speaker two now this isn't even the best part the new feature here that you need to know about is the summary so if we tap summary you'll see the phone can use this on device ai to sort out all of this text and turn it into really nicely organized bullet points it's a brilliant new feature and it's definitely something that i'm going to be using going forward okay tip number six back into the advanced intelligence options once again this time we're going to go to samsung internet so this will apply only to samsung internet if you use google chrome this feature won't work quite the same and it's the summarize feature that i want to show you guys turn this on because with this on next time you're browsing a website and you can't be bothered to read the entire page you can literally just summarize the entire page with the tap of a button once again the icon that you're looking for is the sparkly stars which is right here at the bottom tap that the first time you use it you'll see this screen push ok and then we get the option to translate or summarize so let's summarize and within a matter of seconds there we go a simplified version of a very complicated page and it even gives you the option to copy the text that you've summarized into your own document for reference of course and if it's a bit too brief for you and you want it to be a bit more detailed you can actually ask the ai to make it more detailed you just hit the little icon up here and tap detailed and done and there you go it will reassess that page and add a bit more depth to those bullet points Use this combined with the previous tips that I've showed you and you may never have to do homework ever again. Okay, now let's move on to something a bit more fun. It is Samsung's all new generative AI fill feature. If you dive into your photo gallery and let's say for example, you've taken a photo and it's completely off axis, it's all wonky. You can of course do the old fashioned method and straighten the image up like this, but you'll notice when you do that, it crops right in because it doesn't wanna leave any empty spaces around the edge. Well, now with the generative AI, it's vastly improved. Check this out. Once again, we're looking for the sparkly button there. So we'll tap that. We can change the angle. It is limited to 15 degrees at this point in time. Maybe they'll improve that later on. But you can see now we have empty spaces around the image. If I hit generate. And there we go, we have an AI enhanced image that was the original this is the new one and it looks seamless and if for some reason you don't see the option for generative edit here's how you can access it just jump into your photo gallery go to the little pen button at the bottom here that's your editor go to the settings here and then you'll see at the top the generative edit just make sure this is switched on and you're good to go that was a photo trick now let me show you a video trick open up any video within your video gallery that you've shot on your Samsung device. This is Ori the dog. Well, at least I think she's a dog. Either that or the devil. But check this out. When you push play at any point, if you hold your finger down, it uses AI to add in additional frames to the footage and slow it right down. Now, this is a really good way to see if footage will look good slow-mo. If you do like how it looks, you can actually make a permanent change to that video footage by hitting the pen button at the bottom of the screen. And you'll see you'll be able to drag these little sliders here to certain parts where you want to slow the motion down. And you have the option to set it to quarter speed, half speed, 
and even 2x speed if you want. Okay, here's a bonus tip for you guys. Did you know that on Samsung Galaxy devices, you can actually film with the rear cameras and the selfie cameras at the same time. So if you're filming a reaction to something for TikTok or something like that, you're gonna love this feature. Here's how you can use it. If you scroll across at the bottom of the camera app, you'll see more. And at the end here, you'll see plus. So you can actually add it as a shortcut down here. Just hit the plus and then select dual record. And now with dual record enabled, you can see I've got the rear camera and the selfie camera active at the same time. And actually we can change the layout a bit as well if we want to. This could be a great tool for aspiring creators. Okay, here's another quick tip that's gonna help you with your homework and just research and searching in general. So let's say you're browsing an amazing website like this one right here that's full of adverts. <laughs> Whatgear.net. And let's say you see something that catches your eye and you wanna know what it is. Well, now you can hold your finger down on the home button here or where the little bar is if you're using gestures. And this activates the circle to search. So I'm gonna search the Sony speaker here and straight away you can see I've found that Sony speaker and probably even links to buy it and other reviews of that speaker. But if you do wanna review that speaker, check out this one. And if you're one of the people that used to use the push and hold of the button to summon your AI, actually now it's a swipe in from the bottom corner, either side will open your AI or Google Assistant to be more precise. And here's a little bonus tip. If you're not a fan of the three button layout at the bottom of the screen and you prefer gestures, you can change that very easily. It's kind of hidden actually. Here's how you find it. Just scroll down to display within the settings menu, scroll all the way down. You'll see navigation bar here, tap that. And then here you can switch it to the swipe gestures if you prefer. I personally find it better. It's just less distracting on the screen in my opinion. And the same thing applies. Just hold your finger on that little bar and there you go. You can circle, circle away. Now something that's important that you need to know about this advanced intelligence, some of it works on device, some of it works in the cloud, and some of it will work on device without the cloud, but won't be quite as good. Now, if you're the type of person who's worried about privacy and security, come back to the advanced intelligence menu here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see an option here to process data only on the device, which means nothing's gonna be processed in the cloud. So this is entirely up to you if you're worried about this kind of thing and AI taking over the world. Switching this on will be like doing your part in the war against the machines. If you're still here and you followed along with the first tip and created your own artwork for your wallpaper, I like your style. Anyway, now let's get your lock screen locked down in a style to match your background or your personality. To do this, all you need to do is pinch the home screen, go to wallpaper and style at the bottom. Here you'll have the home screen and also the lock screen. We're tapping on the lock screen here and automatically it will highlight areas of the lock screen that you can customize however you want. For example, if I tap the clock straight away, I get a bunch of different options for clock styles and fonts here across the top. And you can even resize the clock make it massive if you want to, or make it really small. It's entirely up to you and you can move it around a little bit as well. Now, just below the clock, you'll have a space for widgets. Here you can see I've got the battery widget and I've also got the weather widget. I can get rid of those by hitting the little minus and I could choose something else entirely different if I wanted to. And just below that, we have another row. This is your notification row. If you tap that, you can switch it to detailed if you want a bit more information there on your lock screen. Do keep in mind that might give away some of your information. And you will notice there is a slider here is set to 60% by default. That's how much of a background the notifications have. I actually like the solid black here for the notifications. It kind of makes it stand out a bit more from the background. And also when you're customizing the clock, you will see the option to adjust the color of the text as well. The white works really well here because it contrasts nicely against the background. And at the bottom of the screen, there is something very important that I recommend you do on day one, because if you lose your phone and someone finds it and they're actually a nice person, if you put your contact information here, they might just let you know that they found your phone, unless they're a total Now the last two customization tweaks that you can make to your lock screen are the shortcuts at the bottom of this page. So by default, you've got your phone and your camera. However, 
a double tap on the side button by default opens the camera. So if you really wanted to, you could change the camera to possibly the torch, maybe even the voice recorder or something that you would find useful. But don't make any changes yet because I am gonna show you guys how to customize this and you might wanna switch this to something else instead of camera. So wait for that one before you change this one. All right, so hopefully now you've got a bit of a taste for customization of your Galaxy device. Now let's set the tone for your own user experience here. Pinch the home screen, go to wallpaper and style. This time, instead of change wallpaper, we're gonna go to color palette and enable the color palette. And you can see at the top an example of how it will affect the UI, which includes your notification shades, your quick settings and all that kind of stuff, as well as the calculator and things like this. Now you can use the suggested colors here. And if any of these stand out as something that you like, you could of course just use these. I do like the look of this one, but check this out. There's also basic colors. So you've got solid colors that you can use if you prefer, if you wanna keep things a bit more simple. And if you scroll across, you do have two tone options as well. I particularly like this blue and purple combination here. It goes well with the background that I'm using right now. And once you've found a color palette that you like, if you want to, you can apply a theme to your icons as well by ticking this box here at the bottom. And there we go, we've got a color scheme in place and a lot of the apps will appear like this as opposed to their normal colors. All right, let's get a couple more of the basic customization options out of the way, and then we can dive into some of the more well-hidden stuff on your Galaxy. So your Samsung Galaxy phone, whether it's the regular S24 or the Plus or this, the Ultra, all of them have massive screens. So you might as well make the most of them. And by default, you'll have rows of four instead of five, which make the icons massive, which isn't really that necessary. So if you want to have more apps on each page, do this. Pinch the home screen, go to your settings. Here you'll see the option to adjust the home screen grid, the app screen grid, and the folder grid. I've gone five by six, five by six, and four by four for the folders. So this takes effect on all pages and also the app tray. And while we're talking about the app drawer, here's another little bonus tip. By default, it will just be a mess. You can see nothing's in alphabetical order. We've got a bunch of different pages here of sort of categorized apps, which can work for some people. But for me personally, I always do this. Hit three dots in the top right corner here, go to sort and put it into alphabetical order. It's just so much easier to find things quickly. So one of the best things about Samsung's One UI is the ability to have stacked widgets. So right now you can see I've got a clock here at the top, but behind that clock, I've also got the weather. And see the search bar here, which every Android probably has. Behind that, I've got my music player. I've also got Spotify for listening to some podcasts and I've got my VPN. Creating a widget stack is very easy to do, but the best way to do it in my opinion is add a widget to your home screen like this one that I have up here, hold your finger down on it and then you'll have the option to create a stack. You can scroll to your widgets and then try and drag them on top of each other, but if they're not the same size, it won't let you do it until you resize them first. That's why this is the better way. So if you go to create stack, it will give you the options for widgets that can be stacked on that existing widget. For example, if we go into battery, if I tap that, I can add battery level. If you hold your finger down and hit edit, you can hit the plus button and add another one. And when you're on this page, something that's very important to do, in my opinion, is to switch off the auto rotate. Otherwise, from time to time, when you open up your phone, you'll find that the widgets have moved on their own. Okay, this one is very important. And I think a lot of people will probably never do this unless they see this video. Bring down your notification shade and your quick controls. Hit the pen at the top. Now you have the option to edit the quick settings. So you can edit the top row, which are the most used ones, which you'll see on the first swipe down. You can minus any of these off and drag any of these at the bottom up onto that top row. These ones are pretty good though. I rarely ever switch off the auto rotate so I could get rid of that one if I wanted to and maybe add something that would be more useful, like Wi-Fi calling. Now, Wi-Fi calling is an interesting setting. It's not available on all network providers. It is available for me, and the signal at my house is not very good, so that's something I will use quite often. The next step is to edit the full quick settings menu. Once again, you wanna go through these windows here at the top, see if there's anything that you're never gonna use. And once again, there's a bunch of available buttons that you can add up here 
in this empty space and you can even reorganize this entirely if you wanted to. There's a couple of things that I would recommend adding. Secure Wi-Fi is one of them. Performance profile is very good if you're a gamer. Dolby Atmos is definitely something you want to add. And now once you're happy with the organization and the buttons that you've chosen, you can hit done at the bottom of the page. And now you're slightly more organized when it comes to performing quick tasks using the quick settings. Now there's just one problem with the notification shade. You do have to swipe down twice. I don't know, man, that sounds like a lot of work. And if you want to change this, you can. All you need to do is expand your quick panel here, hit the pen and you'll see an option here for quick settings, instant access. With this on, this enables the top right corner of the screen and you can swipe down here and that will expand the entire settings menu as opposed to just that top row. It just saves time. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. Okay, here's a quick security bonus tip for you guys. And did you know that Samsung Galaxy devices have their own VPN native to One UI? The easy way to set this up is to bring down your quick panels, hit the little pen here and edit, and then you can add secure Wi-Fi. If it's not here already, it will be somewhere down here and you can drag it up to the top. Once you've added this to your quick panel, you'll be able to access it very quickly at any time, whenever you need it, right here. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the device is connected to the internet through secure Wi-Fi. Now, something that's great about the secure Wi-Fi feature is it can be very useful in a pinch, but there are limitations to the amount of data you can use for free. So it's important you know where the setting is. So scroll down to your security and privacy. On this page, scroll down again to more security settings. And at the top, you'll see the option to subscribe. So if you want more data or unlimited data, you can do that, it will cost you a little bit. And if you do have a plan with more data, you can enable the auto protect Wi-Fi if you want. That'll just keep you safe on any unknown Wi-Fi networks. All right, now let me show you a new setting in regards to the display. So if you go into your settings menu, go to display, scroll down, and you'll see this option here, adaptive color tone. This adjusts the color and the white balance of the screen based on the lighting condition that you find yourself in. With this enabled, what you might find is the phone starts to turn a bit more warm in certain lighting conditions. In a bright condition like this, you can see it's made the screen very dark based off of the amount of light that the camera sensors on the device are picking up. And it could also be better for your eyes. Little bonus tip here, if you're worried about your eyesight, you could enable the eye comfort shield as well. Okay, remember earlier on when I said don't change this until you see the side key options? Well, now it's the side key options. So we're gonna go into the settings here, go to advanced features. Here, we're gonna look for side button. And by default, you'll notice a double push of the button quick launches the camera and a push and hold wakes Bixby. Now, something I'll say about Bixby is it has improved quite a bit these days and it's very useful if you have other Samsung devices as well. So if you're in the ecosystem, you might wanna leave that as Bixby. I personally prefer the power menu with the push and hold of the power key. This is entirely up to you. But what I wanted to show you here is the double push option. So I really like Google Wallet. You do have Samsung Wallet here as well if you want. I used to have the wallet on the lock screen and then the camera as the double push. But even with the wallet on the lock screen, you still have to put your fingerprint in. So it really didn't make sense. So that's why I have this now as the wallet and I keep the camera icon at the bottom right corner of the lock screen. It just works better that way in my opinion. So I don't know if you know this or not, but the Samsung Galaxy S24 series has seven years of software updates from Google and from Samsung. The question is, will the battery on this device still be good after seven years? Well, that's something we'll find out in the long run. But one thing's for sure, if you're constantly charging your battery at full speed and to 100% all of the time and even leaving it plugged in overnight and things like that could wreck the battery on your phone, unless you do this. Go to your settings, go to battery, and here you'll see battery protection, but don't switch it on yet, tap on that. Switch it on here and then you have the option for adaptive and maximum. Maximum will limit the battery to 80%, which I don't advise. But the adaptive setting is perfect for anybody who charges their phone overnight. The phone will use its learning AI algorithms to figure out when you normally go to bed and it will adjust the charging speeds based off of that. All right, here's a quick user upgrade to make on day one. It's the edge panel. So if you swipe out the edge panel, 
very briefly the settings will pop up here and it will disappear. So when you swipe it out, make sure you tap the settings button very quickly. And here you can add more edge panels. The ones that I think are the most useful are the clipboard and the smart select. And also if you're an explorer, the compass tool is pretty good too. Now when you swipe out your edge panel, you'll have more panels to play with. And the reason I said the smart select is because this allows you to grab parts of the screen and even create GIFs. And it works fantastically well with the S Pen too. Now let's talk about the sound quality on the device. Remember how I said to add Dolby Atmos to the quick panel? Well, when you enable this, this significantly improves the audio on the device in my opinion. And if at any point you don't like how it's sounding when you're listening to a podcast or something, let's say, you have quick access to switch it off here at any point in time. Okay, so now you know how to make your phone sound better, but how about we make it look a little bit better? And this may vary on the different versions of the S24. If you go into your settings, go to display, scroll down, and what you'll notice is the screen resolution is set to full HD plus. However, this screen is much better than that. It can go all the way up to QHD plus. Here's what you've got to take into consideration. If you leave it on full HD plus, your screen's going to be more power efficient. If you put it on QHD plus, it's going to look better, but it's going to drain a bit more juice. So what are you going to do? You're going to choose the blue pill, stay in full HD plus, or you're going to choose the red pill and see how far the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. All right, so that's a lot of the UI cleaned up and customized. Now it's time to dive a little deeper into the secrets and hidden features on the device that I think you need to know. First up, we dive back into the settings. Scroll down to security and privacy. The phone will automatically check if there are any threats or things you need to look at. And you can see straight away the app security is flagging a suggestion. If we tap on that, you will now have the option to turn on app protection. This is a service that's provided by McAfee. What it does is it will scan every app that you install on the device for viruses. So if you're the type of person who sideloads apps off of the Google Play Store so they don't have the Google Play Protect stamp on them, you probably should turn this on on day one. Now I have mentioned this before in other videos. This is available in certain regions and some other regions it's not unfortunately. But if you do have this and you have the option to switch it on, you might as well switch it on. Okay, here's another bonus tip. Thank you guys for sticking around. Bring down your quick panel, hit the pen at the top. Go to edit. Across the bottom here, look for secure folder and find a space to place it within the quick settings. Secure folder is a fantastic tool to use if you've got sensitive documents on your device. Because if you set this up, you can place those documents in this folder and it will have its own unique passcode. And the reason I told you to add it to the quick panels is because this makes it much easier to use without having to dive into the settings every single time. When you enable this, for the first time, it will walk you through how to set it up. It will prompt you to create a password and then you can manually add things into this folder from your device. So like Gandalf the wizard said, Keep it secret. Keep it secret. So you've spent a lot of money on your Samsung Galaxy and I think you probably care about it so now let's look at device care. Jump into the settings once again, scroll all the way down until you see device care and it will suggest the fixes if there are any problems here. But what I want to show you is this. If you scroll down, you'll see auto optimization. Now this is a great way to just refresh your device from time to time when you're not using it. So if you enable auto restart, if the device feels like it needs to refresh all of its memory and reboot with a clean slate, it will do it automatically, but only when you're not using the device. And if you really want to, and you know at a specific point in time every day, you're not gonna be using your phone, you can actually set a schedule for this to do it on your watch. It's entirely up to you, but restart when needed is a good setting to enable. This will just help to keep your phone running at peak performance every single time you use it. All right, here's another safety and privacy tip and something that I think is important to switch on straight away on day one. So go to your settings, scroll down to security and privacy again, scroll down again and you'll see auto blocker. This will block apps from installing on your device from unauthorized sources. So that could be from websites or from third party app stores. 
But more importantly, you can also detect if someone's trying to hack into your phone using a USB-C cable, and some USB-C cables themselves actually hold viruses, so this will protect you from that. And I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but the threat is real. So switch on the auto blocker. Now, have you ever watched a video like this before and someone said, here's how to make your phone faster and then they go into the developer settings, which has a bunch of stuff that looks like it could be dangerous and you're worried about possibly messing everything up to the point where it's foobar. 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 Y'all got that right. If you don't know what that means, and you don't like bad language, you probably shouldn't Google that. There's now a much easier way to speed up the phone without going into developer settings. Here's how you do it. Go to your settings, go to accessibility, go to vision enhancements, and here is a safe way to reduce the animation times on your screens. And with this enabled, everything will just appear to be a little bit snappier than it was before. You can, of course, dive into the developer settings. It's not something I recommend, but here's how you do it. Go into the settings on your phone, go to about phone at the bottom, go to your software information, and where you see build number, you wanna tap that seven times, and then you'll be prompted to enter your pin number. And you'll get a message at the bottom of the screen here saying developer options have been activated. Now you'll notice when you're on the main settings page at the bottom of the screen, you have developer options, Check this out, this is the way to minimize animations entirely. Just scroll all the way down until you see these options, transition, animation scale, and animation duration. You can change the durations of these to be any of the speeds you see here on the screen, or you can switch them off entirely. I'd probably say 0.5 is the better option. Okay, let me show you how to unlock a hidden app within the device that's not in the app drawer by default. If you open your photo gallery, hit the three lines at the bottom right corner. You'll see this, go to studio, tap that, and straight away you'll have the option to add this as an app to your home screen. This is a video editor for vertical videos or pretty much any videos. It works very similarly to how the Instagram editor works. You can add music, you can add stickers, you can add text, and you get a timeline here, and you can have them all on their own timelines and things like that. It's pretty cool. And the great thing about this is you can start a project and it will save it on device and then you can come back to that project later on and carry on working on it. Now, if you didn't get the option to add it to your home screen, the other way you could do it is actually search for it here by typing in studio. And you should see it at the top. Hold your finger on that and then you'll be able to add that to your home screen. Okay, as much as I like this background here, I actually prefer my own wallpaper. And if you guys like this wallpaper, let me know in the comments and I'll send you a link to it. It is the Wolverine. And check this out, this is what I wanted to show you and why I changed the wallpaper. When you use one of your own images, which includes the AI art images, you do get the option to use a new experimental feature. So if you scroll down within your settings, go to advanced features, go to labs, and here is a brand new setting. So this is an ambient wallpaper. It will add effects on top of your background based off of the time and the weather where you are. But I've got a feeling my wallpaper is going to be raining 90% of the time. But if it does snow, I'm assuming it will probably snow on the wallpaper as well. So I'm going to enable this. And as you can see right now, nothing is happening. It's not raining, it's not snowing, it's just very cold. But I fully expect there to be some kind of animations on top of this wallpaper at some point with this setting on. So test it out for yourself, but only if you're using a static wallpaper and not one of the Samsung animated wallpapers, which the phone defaults to. I will say these are actually very nice, these interactive ones. Okay, so you might be wondering what's this one app here that's not the same color as the others. This is an official Samsung app that can upscale and improve all of your photos on your device. And you can't get it through the Google Play Store. You can only get it through the Samsung Galaxy Store. It's called Galaxy Enhance X. I highly recommend you download this app because if you've got any old photos on your phone from older devices that weren't quite as good as this one, you can use this app to upscale everything. You can even take low res photos and turn them into 4K photos if you want to with this app. I'm not gonna go into too much depth because I have done an entire video about this, but definitely grab this app straight away. Another app that you should definitely get from the Galaxy Store while we're here is called Expert Raw. Again, this is an official Samsung app. 
When you capture photos with the Expert RAW, you're essentially capturing a bigger file with more information in it. And this allows you to play around with the colors and the shadows and the highlights and really fine tune your photos far more than you could than when you snap photos with the regular camera. So if you are serious about your photography, you should definitely download this right now. Now listen guys, much to learn you still have. And in regards to myself and this YouTube channel, right now I'm washing lettuce. Next week I'll be on fries. And maybe in five or 10 years, that's when the big bucks will start rolling in but only with your help. So if you wouldn't mind hitting the like and subscribe on this video, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you wanna learn how to unlock the full potential of your Samsung Galaxy's camera system, check out the thumbnail that's on screen right now. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late. You know, I started on cleanup just like you, but now, see, I'm washing lettuce. Soon I'll be on fries, then the grill. A year or two, I make assistant manager. And that's where the big bucks start rolling in.